So the next concept that we want to introduce is the electric potential energy. And so to do that, we're going to go back to two of the definitions that we, that we used in the first semester of the course, our definition for work and the definition for potential energy. So work we define to be the integral from some initial position to some final position of a force vector dotted in with infinitesimal little displacements dr. We define the change in the potential energy as equal to negative the work done by some conservative force. So in the first semester class we saw two conservative forces. The gravitational force was one, the spring force was the other. Each of those had a corresponding potential energy. So the gravitational potential energy came from the work done by the gravitational force. The elastic potential energy came from the work done by a spring. Well when we combine these this semester what that's going to allow us to do is define the change in the electric potential energy. The change in the electric potential energy is equal to negative the integral from some initial position to some final position of the electric force dotted in with an infinitesimal displacement. So one thing this tells us is that in order for us to be able to talk about a potential energy, the electric force must be a conservative force. Well, how can we determine whether your electric potential energy is increasing or decreasing? Well, again, let's think about what we learned last semester. So how can we determine whether any potential energy is increasing or decreasing? So let's start by talking about the two that we already know. So how can we determine whether the gravitational potential energy is increasing or decreasing? The fundamental question there was, is the object moving up or down? And so we had some object. It had a gravitational force pulling it downwards. But the object itself could have moved up or down. And we said if it moves up, then the gravitational potential energy increases. If the object moves down, the gravitational potential energy decreases. Well, because the gravitational force points down, basically we can, we can reinterpret that to say that the gravitational potential energy increases if your object moves against the gravitational force. The gravitational potential energy decreases, on the other hand, if your object moves with the gravitational force. So we can reframe this, and instead of thinking about is the object moving up or down, we can think about whether or not the object is moving with or against the gravitational force. Well, what about the elastic potential energy? So how did we determine whether the elastic potential energy was increasing or decreasing? We had a question that was basically, well, is the object moving towards or away from equilibrium? And so again, if we have some, uh, some object attached to the end of a spring and we pull that object away from equilibrium, we know there's going to be a spring force that's trying to pull on the object to get it back to equilibrium. So if the object moved back towards equilibrium, then the elastic potential energy decreased. If, on the other hand, you pulled the object even farther away from equilibrium, then the elastic potential energy increased. So again, we know that the elastic force is always pointing back towards equilibrium, so we can reframe this just like we did with the gravitational potential energy to say that the elastic potential energy decreases if the object moves with the spring force, and it increases if the object moves against it. So how can we take this to think about how any potential energy increases or decreases? Well, largely what this sounds like is we want to reframe it in terms of the question, is the object moving with or against the conservative force? If the object moves with the conservative force, then the potential energy will decrease. On the other hand, if the object moves against the conservative force, then its potential energy increases. So how can we determine whether the elastic potential energy is increasing or decreasing? We want to know whether or not the object is moving with or against the electric force. So if I take two charges, and we'll just let them both be positive charges here, so I know that they're going to, have, they're going to try and repel each other. So I have electric force forces on each of them that point away from the other charge. Well, if I bring them together and move them in the direction that's opposite of the way that the electric force is pushing on them, that means that the electric potential energy has to increase. If, on the other hand, let's reset those charges, and this time let's let them move away from each other. So as they move away from each other, now I know that they're moving in the direction that the electric force is trying to push them, so the electric potential energy decreases. So the change in the electric potential energy of a charge as it moves in the presence of other charges indicates whether the charge is moving with 
or against the electric force. That's our basic rule that's going to help us figure out what's going on with the electric potential energy. If your charge is moving with the electric force, then the electric force is doing positive work and your electric potential energy is decreasing. On the other hand, in order for it to move against the force, to move against the electric force, some ex external agent has to now be moving those charges. Right? So the electric force is trying to move them in one direction. To have them move in the other means that some other force has to be present. And so if you increase the electrical potential energy, where that increase in energy comes from is from the work that you do. So you in moving the charges against the electric force, the work you have done is converted into an increase in the electric potential energy.